Hey everyone, welcome back to Above Board with Candor Path. Today's guest is Mr. Robert Plank. He is the founder of Done For You Podcasting, which can be found at dfypodcast.com. He's the host of the Marketer of the Day podcast and author of WWHW, which stands for Why, What, How To, and What If. He has helped thousands of entrepreneurs create online businesses through 915 different podcast episodes, 15 books, and 15 online courses. Today's conversation will be covering podcasting, the importance of showing up consistently, content marketing, and so much more. Robert, thanks for joining us today on Above Board. Excited to be here, man. Yeah. Well, we've uh, you, you and I have obviously had a lot of conversations in the past, which we'll talk about, but maybe let's right off the jump talk about 915 podcast episodes. I literally don't know anyone that has had that many podcast episodes. How do you how do you show up so consistently to record that much? Well, it's it's come and gone. Like sometimes I've gone maybe like a month or two of being on hiatus, and I, I miss the days of in the in the beginning of that, like prior episodes like a hundred through five hundred. I had a schedule every Monday and every Friday. I had four episodes each on a calendar and I would look at what was on my calendar and I would kind of do whatever mental preparation was needed in order to like have time before and after and time to to relax and just like tell myself that uh, I had a goal and that Mm -hmm. in order to get to your goals you have to take some action you have to show up which is most of it and then you have to uh, you know bring your a-game and all those other important things so it was just like a consistent uh, you know showing up and recording those sessions and kind of one episode at a time led to all those many hundreds. It's so cool. I think what's um, kind of like a, a secondary benefit, and I'm curious your opinion of this, but in 915 episodes, you've had so many different guests from all different walks of life. In a weird way, it's almost been kind of this cool like networking ex- experience for you to get to know other people. I mean, that's, you, you know, I'll, I'll share our story of when I came across your podcast, consumed it for a while. And before we even had above board, I reached out to you and I'm like, Hey, I want to be on the show. Like, can we, can I talk about some of these different topics? I have some ideas. I've never been on a podcast before. And you always joke that I was like the, the person that liked podcasts so much that I wanted to be on a podcast. Um, yeah, I love that story. So tell us. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm curious from your point of view, like, have you found it to be a very useful, form of just marketing and getting to know people too? I have. It's a good foot in the door. And I don't know about you, but uh, for a a lot of years, I would attend conferences and I would maybe meet a handful of people, right? I would meet like four or five like people who were right for me and like good timing and just someone Mm -hmm. I wanted to continue the conversation with. And so many times I would just think like, who else at that event I attended just was there and I was there and we just didn't talk to each other or how many of those four or five people that I had a good connection with, nothing really went anywhere. And so Mm -hmm. even before uh, podcasting existed, I would meet with someone and every now and then we would like get together on a, like a Skype call or something and record it. And I would put it uh, on an audio button and put it on a webpage before podcasting was even a thing. And I found that to be a lot more like reliable and, and tangible and repeatable because there are those people, I guess, that can just show up to uh, events or conferences or meetings and just make all sorts of connections, get all sorts of business cards, and it really plays out. But I needed something that uh, that was more of a system for me. So that way, if I met someone, then I was in a way like forced to follow up, right? Like forced to contact them again and then be on the podcast. And then I'm sure you've dealt with this, John, where sometimes you think, well, like, why am I talking to this person, right? Like, talking to them at an event, you follow up later, you get on some kind of a Zoom call and you're like, but we're just sitting here, why are we talking? So by having uh, having a podcast of my own, my own like platform, they call it, and by having someone on the podcast, I'm automatically doing them a favor because I'm kind of amplifying their message and then they're doing me a favor because they're giving my people content. So the the reason is because not all of us are, are social butterflies and it's a good kind of repeatable system uh, podcasting to to get talking to the people that you can help and who can help you in your business moving forward. I'm not just talking to random people. I'm talking to people that um, I've become their affiliates. Some of them mm-hmm. have become mine. We put out some compilation books. Uh, some of them I've made books or narrated books or ran their podcasts. So 
there is some potential. I'm not just talking to random people. There's potential as mm -hmm. far as business that we can do together in the future. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on on because I, I feel like both of those are a learned skill. So so the conventional sense of networking and and getting your putting yourself out there in these like uncomfortable conversations, going to dinners or cocktail hours. I can remember doing that in my early 20s. <laughs> I was I was awful at it. And then over time, with enough reps, I got comfortable talking with people and getting to know people. And then we start recording a podcast in 2020. And I felt, you know, you can go back to the early episodes and I felt like I was not great at that either. And then as time has gone on, just developing a deeper sense of comfort. And what's kind of cool is like, like you're talking about with some of these conversations, like you're going to, you're going to probably have these discussions with people anyway. It's someone that's interesting that you want to get to know. And it's an awesome way to just say like, Hey, let's, let's record this conversation and then create some value out of it for you. Um, did, did you find that doing this certainly 900 plus episodes in, I mean, it's like second nature, you know, and, and as I've gotten to know you, like when we've recorded stuff before, it's like, we get in, we rock and roll, we hit record and we go. Um, and, and so you've done this so many times. Did you find that that was a learned skill for you or was that something that kind of came natural to you? It for sure was learned. And in the same way you can look back at past episodes, I can do the same and I can yeah. probably identify which year it was based on the level of awkwardness. And I've learned to embrace the awkwardness and yeah. it's a, I mean, and you've experienced this podcasting is an amazing way to work on yourself. And pe people talk about things like, you know, refining your message and you get that from having these conversations and like the business that you're in anyway is a form of self-expression. And so this is a way to really like work on that a lot and to talk about the the random things, right? Like it doesn't always have to be all business. Sometimes it can be about your how you're managing your emotions or how you're finding the motivation or some uh, project that you're passionate about. So it doesn't always have to be like just about, you know, what, I, what I'm launching or what my project is. You can kind of go into the, the other uh, off the beaten path stuff. And I think that uh, I didn't really have this aha until you were on my show this last time when we talked about the idea of don't seek the perfect conversation. And hmm. it's really easy to get locked into that habit of you talk to someone on the phone and the drive through on a podcast, whatever. And then later on, you think back to it. And you think, oh, man, like if only I'd open with that joke or when they said this, then I could have said that. And it's an easy way to drive yourself crazy. And that aspect in particular of letting go of the perfect conversation it took the hundreds of episodes in order to unlearn that behavior and just just to be like you know we're having a conversation and the the thing that i might think that was bad or awkward about the conversation chances are the other person didn't even notice mm -hmm. and then the the opposite might be true right i might have said something that i thought was really great the other person didn't really care that much so embrace the awkwardness because a lot of it doesn't matter yeah, well said. And I, I would say too, I can count on one hand um, how many episodes we've done that are very like Canterpath financial driven, even though in the title is our company name, but so many of them are about challenges that we're experiencing or finding commonalities. Um, you know, we, we all we all have struggles. We all, you know, there's different things that we identify over. And a lot of that is, you know, the authenticity, I think, of the conversation kind of comes into play when we're not just like you said, like always selling like X, Y, Z, like here's my product, this is what I'm selling to you type of thing. Um, and I like where you said embrace, I think you, I think you'd phrase it, embrace the awkwardness. Oh, there, yeah. there is an element to that because it's those first several times, I mean, I would say a couple dozen, you know, 20, 30 episodes in looking at a camera and having this conversation and even even very recently, I did a solo podcast. I've never done one solo. We've always had a guest or we've always had Rich or Matt on the show with me. I did a solo one. It was so awkward. But it was on the other side of that, it was kind of nice to be like, wow, I did that. Like that was cool. It was a little, maybe it was a little weird in my own head. And it probably came out okay. But just embracing that and taking that like imperfect step forward anyway is is so worth it. Um, I have a question. So, you know, you're talking about. And, and I know you do this for a living for other people. You help them, you know, with their podcasting. And uh, why, what do you feel like? Because I remember in 2019, 2020, I mean, it was, it was, it still is all the rage. But when we were thinking about starting above board, um, it felt like the right time. 
Um, so this is a two part question. What do you feel like? Does every business owner need a podcast? That's part one to it. Part two is: Have we missed the boat on podcasting, or is it still worth creating your own podcast if you're interested in doing it? I think yes, every business owner needs a podcast because it it allows you to express yourself and you you don't do it alone, right? There are, mm-hmm. there are those people in your inner circle where they might be your employees, coworkers, best clients, future clients. It's worth it to have these sorts of conversations. And even like you said something in there about how you have your uh, your above board podcast for, for Candor Path Financial. And it's not just about your company, right? Because like even above your head there, you have the signed family. And there's that thinking of, okay, well, when uh, when someone uh, you know deals with the, the their money situation in whatever context, right? There's all sorts of of like em- emotional aspects and getting things done, and then there's also like once you're ahead on the money, like what do you do with it? And you enjoy your your free time. What do you build with it? So there's a whole umbrella that you can embrace and all these conversations that you uh, can have, and at the very least, uh, you know, kind of memorialize the top ten or twenty. Uh, people who are in your business or whatever context that means. So everyone needs a podcast, even if it's just a handful of episodes, or even if it's just like some solo episodes to get your best ideas out. It's kind of like when I go to a website and don't, I don't really see that the person has a blog or I go to someone's LinkedIn and I see that maybe they don't have even like a few little articles written. I'm thinking, what's up with that? It's not that hard to record a few of these audio episodes. Mm-hmm. And then as far as missing the boat on podcasting, uh, never, because there's always some form of uniqueness and originality and authenticity that you mm-hmm. have that that no one else has, right? Yeah. There's always uh, new slants, angles that that you might have on making money, managing your money, uh, and just dealing with everything else that happens in life. So, uh, yeah, everyone needs a podcast, and it's not too late. Yeah, that's well, that's a great point. And I, that was a loaded question about the timing of podcast. I had a feeling that was going to be your answer, but I wanted to hear you say it anyway. Um, I, I will share that it's it has been a great opportunity for, at least in the realm of, I mean, we do this for a lot of different reasons, but in the realm of like staying connected and in touch with clients, like our community of folks that we work with, it's been a fun opportunity to share stuff that might not even conventionally come up in discussion about myself. And then I have a meeting six months later, or four months later with a client and they go, I remember when you mentioned so-and-so about your daughter and you coached her softball team or whatever it was. And I'm like, cool. Cause I, oh, I know that they, you know, they heard that on the episode and they were listening and they were engaged and they got to know me in a more intimate way. And I would argue that that, especially in, in a, in a relationship building business was uh, honestly all businesses are developed upon relationships, right? It's been so great for folks to kind of get to know us in that way. Something that I w- I'd like to mention, and I'm curious, you're, you know, from uh, again, we're, so we're recording this, we're in the, epi- like in the seventies, you're in the nine hundreds of episodes. Uh, certainly you've experienced this. I know we have. So we sit down and we brainstorm, Hey, what are some ideas? Like, what are we going to talk about today? What are, what are some of the discussions? And we'll say, we'll come up with something. We'll go, oh, that's kind of redundant. Like we've done that one before. Or we've talked about that before. I think it's, it hasn't been until recently that we've realized that even though there might be something that maybe feels redundant to us, it's an important enough message to maybe share again or share in a different way or with new perspective. And, and I think that that's helpful because you never know when someone's going to listen to your show and they're going to hear something at the right time for them that kind of clicks and then they have that aha moment. So question to you is, have, have you experienced that in 900 plus episodes where there's been recordings and you're like, well, this maybe feels like it's redundant. And then just maybe some self-talk on like how you work through that and said, I'm going to record this anyway, because it's an important message for the time being that I'm going to record it in. So I think the easy solution to that is look at other podcasters and look at other YouTubers, especially. Because you'll and and especially because on YouTube you can go to someone and sort by their most popular videos and you'll be amazed and you, I mean it's even worth it to sort by your own popular videos because you'll see that some of the most like basic elemental no brainer topics are the ones that get the most views and sometimes I mean I think um the other day I looked up like how to install a WordPress website and if you know anything about uh, websites and computers it's it's like a couple of clicks. But there's, uh, but then there's some of these YouTubers where every year 
they make a, new, a brand new video of how to make the five clicks to install a WordPress site and they add the current year at the end. So that way it's like, well, look, we recorded this brand new for this, even though it's the same five clicks, we recorded it for this year and it gets like 4 million views. And mm -hmm. so people want to know these basic things and because uh, content is so disposable for better or for worse, mm -hmm. someone might search something and because you recorded this podcast or this video, Two years ago, Google says it's it's not uh, up to date anymore. So then maybe you can uh, p create something new that's simpler or more streamlined or gets more to the point. And like uh, when I look on Amazon at people's books, when I see if someone has a book that's maybe like 10 years old, I think, man, so, so much has changed in the world. It doesn't even matter what the topic is. And I think, you know, not much has probably changed in such and such as book about leadership or about business or about accounting. But then I, I kind of just, for whatever reason, I discount if something is uh, more than a few years old. So it's worth at the very least to go back and revisit these topics. And you might even, if it took you 20 minutes to say two years ago, maybe you can create the five minute version, but at the very least look at who is already doing this. And you might even get angry in a good way at how they recorded an episode about something so simple, but they got all these views about it. And you're like, you know, let me jump in and create my better version of that. I will agree with that statement that even if something is as valuable today as it was five or 10 years ago, if I see that it was published, if it's an old podcast recording and I'm looking for something specific, but I see that it was published five years ago versus the thing that happened to be published within the last month, I'm going to tend to listen to the newer thing because for, for whatever reason, I assume maybe there's more research around it. Maybe there's more that we know about it today than we knew then, or maybe there's something that's more applicable to the world today that we live in. So I'll like, I'll liken it to, to, to finances. You know, when we were, when we did content around COVID, you know, in, in March of 2020, we all know what happened and the markets sank like a rock during that time frame, And there was immense amount of volatility if you if you take that word COVID out, but you replace it with banking crisis or inflation or interest or whatever, it's a little bit of this. It's it's similar messaging as as a result of like as to what are the things that we should be doing during this time. Um, with, let's say with our money, you know, if that's kind of the track I'm going down. But but because it's a we're talking in in real time in today's economics of what's going on now. It, I feel like it lands better. So I will agree with that statement that you made. Sometimes when something's outdated, we sort of discount it or don't give it as much credit, even though it might be, it might be the premise for which the follow-up things are actually written upon. Like it might be the, the key primary material, but we still kind of give it um, a little bit less credence. I, I wonder, you know, for us, I, we've sort of embraced creating and recording content and media and and all of it's sort of driven with this idea of just communicating to our audience and our community of clients and being in front of uh, of them what do you feel like because I, I know a lot of business owners that have said to me before yeah i should i should start a podcast or i should shoot videos and you know be more active on linkedin or whatever and for some reason you know they you know busyness life you and i've talked about Actually, I gave you credit a long time ago on one of your podcasts. You did one on someone came in and talked about prioritizing the urgent things over the important things. So we just respond to all these urgent requests all day long and we never actually get the important stuff done. What is it about that? I mean, do you feel like there, there are certain things that are holding people back uh, to recording a podcast or to doing these things? How can we maybe apply some of today and and focus on maybe being more productive or actually like going over the edge and saying like, I've always wanted to record a podcast. You know what? I'm going to do it. Or I've always wanted to write an e-course or write a book and you know what? I'm going to do it. And because those are all things you coach on. What, what, what are your thoughts in that regard? My thoughts are that you do need to have that mindset shift and be more forward thinking because we're all stuck in the present, right? And, and putting out today's fires and things like making a course or making a podcast requires you to think, okay, well, in in two months, someone is going to be searching this phrase and they'll find it and they'll get to my podcast and that'll lead them to everything else in my business, but it won't happen today. 
And I think that that's because that, first of all, that's kind of the, the reason not to do it, right? The, the reason not to do it is because it will not pay off today. And what will pay off today is putting out the fires of all the urgent things that are happening. And so there, there's two things that I think will make it happen. Thing number one is blocking out time to do it. If you can block out from Friday, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., and you do nothing else during that time, during those two hours, and even if all you do is record a quick five-minute uh, video on your phone, then that's something. And uh, just as far as all these, you've been saying, I, I talked to all these people from all these walks of life, and the ones that are consistent with their content are the ones that actually have time every week blocked out. And, and for some reason, it seems to be like a Friday or a Saturday morning. Maybe there's less uh, less chaos going around when that happens. And then for me personally, um, I I like having the guests show up because I I see my calendar with these guests that are are going to be uh, going to be there, and I tell myself like if I don't show up for this meeting, the person's going to be waiting or they're going to be mad that I rescheduled. So I just show up for the meeting, and then I have to do it, and then now it gets recorded, and then afterwards, well, if I don't publish that episode, I'm letting down that guest as well. So if mm -hmm. um, you know, we all have all this, this these weird psychological hangups. So if your number one, if your excuse or the story you're telling yourself is that I don't have time or I'll do it when I'm busier, then you need to block out that time to put everything else temporarily on a hold to get to this. Mm -hmm. And then if your pro if the thing holding you back is the low self-esteem in disguise, mm -hmm. then the solution there is to then make it about someone else. And you're letting someone else down if you don't put out this this episode and if you don't know what's holding you back then i say both of those two techniques uh are a good place to start is block out the time to do it and then get some sort of guest even if it's like a a past mentor or a, a hero of yours like i have this coaching client who just texted me this morning and he's been a client for the past 11 years and he said well i can't make our coaching meeting this week that he's paying for and i said okay well instead of the meeting let's record a podcast and, and so, uh, and I use this uh, service called Calendly where someone can just go and choose a time slot. And so it's all these micro commitments, right? I'm just telling him, let's record a podcast. Here's the link to schedule. And there's nothing else for me to do. Uh, but what there is for him to do is schedule that time slot. So when I see the time slot, then I now I have to show up for that meeting. And when the time rolls around for it, I have to show up for it. And when, when we show up and have a conversation, I have to record it. And then now that it's recorded, I have to put it, publish the episode. So it's just all these little things. So that way I don't have to cross this huge grand Canyon of someday I'll have a podcast. Someday I'll have all these episodes. Someday mm -hmm. I'll have all these conversations. It started with one. I sent the link. He gets it scheduled. I show up and then I have to put it out there. Otherwise I'm letting him down. So you're in my mind, you are, you are the king of consistency, uh, because I, you know, I, I look up to you and I'm proud to know you because I, I, I've seen how much your podcast has grown specifically. And the two key principles that you just talked about are so very real. So one, you're creating accountability. You know, we, you, you don't want to disappoint that person who took time to look at your schedule, book a time with you on Calendly to have this conversation and record it and then not show. So you're creating a high degree of accountability and the time blocking thing is I'm embarrassed to admit that I don't think I really practiced that until maybe 2019 or 2020 is when I really started saying I'm going to block, I'm going to schedule time to do the important things versus letting the urgent things sort of fill up my calendar and my weeks and my months, you know, it's like a quarter can go by in a blink of an eye. And I go, man, I know I was really busy. I know I was busy and I know I helped people and I did good work, but I don't feel like I got all these things accomplished that I wanted to get accomplished. And so not doing the time blocking really made it just, it allowed for excuses to pop up for me of just saying like, oh, well, you know, I'm busy. So I'll do it next quarter. I'll do it next month. The time blocking again, actually both of those things are very make you force yourself to be highly accountable to yourself what would you say to somebody who maybe is is leaning on technology as a as a as a um crutch to this because I, I will share that you know once we started recording or or the once i got my head wrapped around the idea of i'm going to record a podcast or we're going to do videos we're going to do content we're going to get our messaging out there 
Then it was sort of this fury of you Google it and there's a thousand platforms. There's so much out there. And so there's a little bit of a double-edged sword there because I think the technology is there to make it as simple as possible. But that could also be an overwhelming endeavor if you're someone like me who's maybe more comfortable on the conversation side, but then less comfortable on the post edit and the production and the posting and who do I host it with and all that stuff. What what would be, I know this, this is a big question that's probably hard to answer um, in the time that we have left, but what are your thoughts on that front? Well, my thoughts are that you have to start somewhere and that the hosting platform and the equipment that you have and the lighting and the decorations, they'll all be things that evolve over time. In yeah. the same way that we were just talking about how those first couple of episodes might be awkward mm -hmm. and maybe the sound won't be quite right or et cetera. And just like how, when we look at what your podcast looks like years from now, maybe you'll have all sorts of fancy lighting and fancy graphics and, and, you know, a fancy recording studio, who knows what. And so those are all things that you build up to over time. And we all know that person who, lo who loves buying the toys, right? Like uh, grown men who, think that they're buying equipment for their business, but they're really just buying, you know, the, uh, the, the webcam and, and microphone equivalent of a, of a four wheeler of a doom buggy, right? People love to have their toys. Uh, but, and, that, and that's great, but you can't use that as an excuse to not take action, right? It's, it's way too tempting to say you're doing all this research and that you're, uh, you're looking at what's the best platform, what's the best microphone. And you, you need to start somewhere. And I think that, um, the, your the technical side will evolve over time and it will figure itself out and and if you go on a, a buying spree now you won't you'll get too many things and you won't know what you're getting mm -hmm. and even like with the microphone like I, I was I played around with like two or three microphones before I found what I wanted and I tried two or three different arms and I was like okay I'll, I'll have the microphone like right above and I see some of these people that have the the standing setup, and I'm sort of jealous of that. And I think I might have my wife make like this wall over here. Whoops. Well, can't. Oh, cool. I don't even know what I'm pointing it at, but she might make like the the wall over there be like just the standing up area. And so, uh, just don't let it hold you back. Start somewhere, and the t the details will work themselves out over time. The simple answer, because I like to have kind of like the default answer, just so that way it's not a cop out. Simple answer is get a blue yeti microphone because it's good enough uh, see that's, that's what you got i guess, Literally guess correctly. What I have. just pointed at and, it for the folks listening yeah and then as far as hosting uh, i like anchor is free so you can technically have a podcast for free and then i've been i, I just set up a client podcast the other day and i use blueberry it's like bl blueberry with a with no e and for 20 dollars a month you can have like a WordPress website and everything. And it's just like specifically made for podcasting. Uh, and, but it doesn't really matter, right? If you use Libsyn, Buzzsprout, there's there's so many uh, uh, so many podcast platforms. It's just whatever is the platform that gets you to create a podcast sooner rather than later. And they all have this ability for you to migrate it. So yeah. if you set up what podcast you want and later on you say, ooh, some other platform is really good. Almost all of them have a one click ability for you to move it all over. So it's not even something to worry about. Yeah. And, and I'm guilty of being the type of person who spent uh, part of the reason our podcast was delayed to launch when we launched it was because of this very problem. I, you know, it was in my head. It's got to be perfect. Every we need our mics need to be perfect. Everything needs to work out. And then as I learned, once we started recording, there were things that you until you do it in real time, you can't really experience how you would have tweaked it or changed it until you actually have that, you know, that time in. And I think it was, I think it was maybe even rich on the show who finally at one point said, like, if we spend this much time trying to figure out how, what platform and all that stuff, we'll never, we'll never record. Cause there's always something new coming out every month. There's always another way to perfect it. And I think this very much speaks to the consistency that we're talking about today and something that, that you had mentioned that we talked about prior, which is like just taking imperfect stride in the right direction. It doesn't have to be this calculated perfect step. Just take that step and, and then let it evolve from there, which I think is cool. And for what it's worth, because obviously we've mentioned this a few times now, but the folks listening to this, this is also something that you help people with as well, correct? I do. It's called DFY Podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can't imagine or think of anybody better to help with podcasting 
than the person who has close to a thousand podcasts and tons of courses and, and books on this on this very topic. So Robert, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Uh, I was looking forward to this conversation in large part because we've had such synergy in the past uh, discussions we've had together. So I knew today wouldn't be any different. Um, so before I let you go, I, I just want to mention, so dfypodcast.com and then obviously your podcast, Marketer of the Day, which can also be found at marketerofthedaycom correct? Correct. Anywhere else for folks to follow you or listen to your material? Uh, my book is www.hwbook.com. And that is all about the, the format, the structure of having a podcast, especially. So if you're one of those people that says, I'm so nervous about a solo cast or about doing an interview, what if there were just four questions and in any podcast, you kind of go from start to finish to these four questions and the formula would work itself out and it would be exciting and there would never be a dull moment. And every podcast episode you recorded would be the best episode you recorded to date. You need that formula, which is why, what, how to, what if. And it's at www.book.com. Oh, I love that. And, and you need that formula from the king of consistency himself, Mr. Robert Plank. So Robert, thanks for joining us on the show again. And, uh, and as always, thank you to, to the listeners of Above Board with Canter Path. We love these conversations. Uh, we love our listeners and audience. Please do me a favor and share this show if you found it useful. Uh, we grow our audience exclusively by word of mouth, and we love getting these conversations out there into the hands of people that will also find value from it. Thanks again for joining us today. We'll see you next week.